In this demonstration we're going to look at a couple of the more advanced features of the two rail sweep tool and we're going to use those to rapidly produce um, the plaque or base design that you see here. Uh, and I'm going to do this uh, including drawing the vectors uh, from first principles because we will need to look at the vector construction uh, as part of this demonstration. OK, so let's cut to the 2D view and there's our component preview and I'm going to delete that so we're going to start from scratch. And the way we're going to do that is we need to create the outer and inner rails around which we're going to make our little OG cross-section sweep uh, and then we want to fill in the centre of that uh, shape then to the correct height for the sweep um, to form the plaque base. So we'll start by creating the first rail, the outer rail, and I'm going to draw a rectangle here which I'm going to make 18 inches by 6 inches here uh, and I'm going to make the uh, internal radius corners uh, one and a half inches um, as well and we'll create that uh, and close and here's our main outline. If I press F9 that will centre that for me in the model. Now to move from this uh, outer rail to the inner one I can simply offset the selected vectors inwards. OK, so that's made a nice uh, boundary which matches the design we looked at earlier on. But there's a couple of things to note about this. Firstly, um, when I select the outer shape, if I select N, let's have a quick look at the node structure of these shapes. So hopefully you're aware that um, all vectors in Aspire uh, are made up of a series of spans and nodes. And what we mean by a span is the line that joins any two black nodes here okay and that line can be an arc as it is in this case a bezier curve or a straight line as it is in this case now uh, our design at the moment comprises lines and arcs and so we've been fortunate because when we offset that um, the offsetting code preserves lines and arcs uh, in the resulting offset be aware that that will not always be the case you may well need to edit your artwork uh, if you want them to be matching as they are here now, crucially, it's offset the arcs um, so that they're um, effectively of a different radius uh, than the external ones. And what's going to cause us a bit of trouble in a minute is that this means that the relative length of this arc compared to this one, as it forms the curve, is quite different in order to achieve the nice um, proper offset look that we're seeing here. So I want you to bear that in mind. We're going to come back to that when we look at the two rail sweep. Before we do that, let's create the cross section and I'm going to do a sort of um, something a little bit like an OG cutter profile here um, just to add the decorative shape to the edge of the tool. I'm going to do it starting from a rectangle, haven't been too worried about the size there. Uh, so we're starting with a rectangle which again comprises uh, four spans, four nodes, uh, all lines at the moment. If I hover over this top span, I can press I to insert some further nodes uh, along the top. I can select nodes like this while I'm in node editing mode and I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move them uh, in one or other axis only and that keeps their relative position. Uh, I can also uh, select this one here and move this to the center uh, and uh, as I hover over the span on either side of this and I get the icon changing to indicate that I'm pointing at a span with the wavy line I can press A to convert that line span into an arc and then I can adjust the arc with its control point. Arc again. Uh, so in this case, I'm producing a nice little wave through the center here. Once these arcs are there, we can be quite free with the central point. So I've just produced a little wave there comprising two arcs and a small step at the bottom. Uh, now, because this is a profile rather than a closed shape, I need to remove the bottom span. So I roll the mouse over so I get the span indicator and press D and that deletes the bottom span. Now we're all good to start building our two rail sweep uh, model. So I'm going to press page down now so that I can see the two views uh, side by side and I'm going to swap to the modeling tab but instead of using the modeling tab um, button directly I'm just going to double click anywhere that's blank on this drawing tab and that whips me across really quickly and that's quite convenient way of swapping between the tabs. The reverse is also true, so if I double click on the modeling tab I can swap back quickly to the drawing tab. Okay, so uh, let's go into the 2 sweep tool and I'm going to select the outer, the inner and the cross section and immediately I see a big problem which is indicated to me by these previews which are showing me where it's trying to join this cross section between the rails and I can see the problem here is that the starting point 
that it's marked in green on each of our curves is totally out of kilter. So I'll deselect for a second, select the middle one, N, and uh, if we just check, but the outer one here, you see the green node is over this side, whereas on the inner one, it's over this side. So what I'm going to do is move the inner one here, and I do that by hovering over the point until I get the node indicator there and pressing P, and that moves the start point to uh, the matching position on each curve so that the cross section will start in the correct location. OK, so I'm pressing escape now to go back to my shape uh, selection tool, select the outer curve again, the inner curve and the cross section. And now we see something much more sensible. Let's sweep that and have a look. OK, so it looks sort of OK, but something has started to go really wrong around this edge, uh, which is definitely not what we were intending. So what's happened here? Well, we can see again that the previews are indicating in advance that this is going to be an issue because the previews are showing us some examples of how the cross section is being stretched between the two rails. And this cross section is basically placed and stretched on the rails at equal proportional distances. So what it does is it takes the position that's exactly at the start of this curve and matches it to the position that's exactly at the start of this curve. Then it will match uh, say the position that's 10% around this curve with the position that's 10% around this curve. And this brings me back to my earlier point that unfortunately for us, because these curves are relative to the overall size of the shape, um, are a different radius, then effectively the proportional distances along this curve do not match uh, in design terms the proportional distances along the outer curve. And so what we're starting to see here is that the cross section is getting increasingly out of sync as it's moved along the sweep. So how do we correct this? Well, um, one way we can do this now is to use the option here to connect rail nodes, which is uh, available to us. And the reason this is available is, as I pointed out earlier on, our two rail uh, vectors have got exactly the same number of nodes and spans in them. And this is crucial. To, this command will be greyed out if your drive rails, your selected vector rails, do not have the same number of nodes in them. So you must make sure, if you want to use this option, that they do match in terms of spans and nodes. OK, and as we've seen earlier on, that's fairly straightforward. You can insert nodes and make sure that they match. Uh, so I'm going to check this box on, and you can see that that's really sorted out the corner immediately for us. Uh, and the reason is that now it sort of understands that uh, we want this cross section to be kept forced into sync so that it always meets uh, the matching node as it goes round. Uh, so that's a much cleaner shape and quite difficult to uh, uh, produce through any other method. Now the last thing here is that we've got, um, because I didn't pay too much attention to my cross section height um, when I drew it earlier on, I'm really not sure what the centre height of this is, but it's going to be some arbitrary value quite frankly. Um, but that doesn't matter because uh, I'll let Aspire work that out for me by asking it to fill the centre for me. Uh, so I don't need to worry about it. So I click Fill Centre and now you've got uh, straight away the basic design that we're after. So I'm going to just uh, close this um, modelling operation now. And here's our component. Um, and um, like I said, we didn't really pay too much attention to the height of our component, but we don't need to worry about that because uh, one of the nice things we can do in Aspire is come back into the properties of this component. Now it's been created and we can make it whatever height we like. So um, I can just set this height um, to be exact um, as a scaling operation later on. Uh, and that makes it much more convenient. So that concludes the quick demo of some of the more advanced options in the two rail sweep.